Welcome back to the channel. So uh, this week we're just going to revisit the first uh, build that we did in this series, which is going to be a uh, German North African vehicle, but we're going to use the new paint that Tamir have brought out recently, which is XF93. So I'm just showing you here, uh, this is an old model I've had in the display case, just waiting to be sorted, um, not on display. And I thought I'd bring it, uh, get it, get it up together for this one. So what I was showing you there is I painted it German grey and then put some hairspray on it, and it reacted with the paint. So I sort of left it, and I just figured it was smooth enough. So let's just paint over it with this uh, this new colour, and do a bit of a demonstration on using that colour, and just a little bit of um, different techniques when we get to weathering uh, that. Um, over this color so it sprays down very nicely it's just like any other tamiya paint the, the new range is exactly the same as the old range um this isn't the lacquer version this is just the acrylic version so this is xf 93 but i do believe it is if it's not already it is coming out in the lacquer range as well so there we can see it's on and it's a very very nice color actually if they do two types this is the 1942 version and they do a earlier version which is the 1941 version which is xf 92 i think both of those make up the troppen scheme but i'll have to look into that it's uh, they've got they got numbers they've got ral numbers um and they're quite specific so we'll have to check on that later but for this for argument's sake this is a 1942 panzer 4d so uh that's how, that's how we're painting it. This may have been early enough to have been the other colour because they were around in 41. Um, but I chose to use this colour as the test bed. So there we go. Uh, nice flat finish. Nice and smooth. Paint's gone down really well. Uh, none of that nastiness from below showing through either. So I was right there, thankfully. Now, I've obviously gone and done the rest of it. I've painted, on, painted the rubber rims for the wheels and um, done all of that. We don't need to show that here, that's not what it's about. I thought I would show just putting on these uh, these uh, decals, which are in a particularly tricky spot. So these are the Tamiya decals, and I've cut around the carrier film, this is my usual trick. I'm just trying to bed those in and around these vision ports, and it's quite a difficult area to get them down in, but they do go eventually. Uh, multiple uses of Microsol and a few other setting solutions, and they um, they basically get us to where we need to be with it. I just keep po prodding and poking them and then <laughs> breaking the top of the one off. Um, the one good thing about Tamiya decals being thick is if you do break them like this, and obviously that's a weak point where I've been pushing it over that raised bit, you can kind of manhandle it in. But now I've broken that, you know, I, I am aware that that's a sort of weak point, so I don't go pressing that too much. Try and use the setting solutions to fix that down. And then um, I do actually just touch this in with a bit of acrylic paint afterwards. Uh, the slight gap, just a little bit of white and then a little bit of black. And on small areas, you can't see it, you, you don't pick it up. So that's what we're using, the micro sole, which is the uh, solution that melts it into uh, raised areas. It gives us kind of painted on look. On the turret bin, sorry it's a bit out of focus, but these go down very nicely. It's because it's, it's smooth, it's no problem there. So there we go. Um, everything's painted and ready for the weathering. So just that shows the colour there. Um, in the usual way, I've painted the tracks rubber black. I've painted the road wheels using the wheel mask, as we've done in uh, many previous videos. And because this was an older build, I'd actually put on a field modified um, rack at the back for storing petrol cans so for that we need to add some petrol cans now these are a couple of great sets that Tamiya do uh, this one in particular um, that I'm showing here which is the detail up series and then we've also got the boxed version as well which is in the fuel drum set what was lost on me until I looked at them is they're so well detailed they've got the date stamp in them and these green ones are 1943 the grey sprue is 1940 uh, 1939 so obviously our 1942 vehicle shouldn't have jerry cans on it that are stamped in 1943 so because of that i use the green ones and, and hide them um if i use any at all actually it looks like i just used all the gray ones instead so we're doing a um fuel can because that didn't have a date stamp on it but Presumably that is a later fuel can. I'm not aware if they had two different types. 
and uh, all the jerry cans are now assembled there and um, looking at a bit of reference um i'm going to do something that you would actually think they wouldn't do <laughs> and store them on the turret but that did seem to happen occasionally and also regardless of that whether you think putting fuel on a turret is a good move or not uh these are actually going to be the water cans so we're going to put the white cross on these to show that they're carrying water not fuel that gives a nice effect and again breaks up that that single color and just gives a bit of character to the vehicle uh, so assembly is pretty straightforward with these sand um, sand any of the problems back glue the can together then we put on the handles and put the opening lid i guess it would be called uh, we glue that onto the end as well and that makes up our jerry can uh, there's a few other little bits on that um, Detail Up series sprue, which is quite useful. A couple of little boxes, a few other small things. So I'm just putting all of those in. And I've decided to do a block of jerry cans across the turret and then just enough jerry cans here to wedge in the fuel can. And the reason behind all of this is I'm, I very much like to, when we're doing stowage and stuff on vehicles, that's, that's another thing we're looking at here, is the basic starting to think about stowage, which we'll come back to later on, is you need to think about how it's there. You don't want to just stick a jerry can on the roof of a tank and think it's going to stay there when a tank goes up and over a sand dune or, or over a hill or whatever. So wedging these in and around the back, we've got that framework built up, which is just a bit of plastic card and a couple cocktail sticks wedged in to look like wooden posts that have been bolted through something like that just makeshift and then planks of wood nailed to it that's the kind of idea um, so that obviously wedges everything in so it can't fall off the back and off the sides and then we're going to tie it in with some thread uh, to make sure it's all clamped down onto the vehicle including the uh, fuel can as well and with all of that the turret bin needs to have enough clearance because you wouldn't want the crew getting out halfway through the middle of a battle having to get rid of a jerry can that's got wedged under the turret and then they can't move the turret so just think about the practical uses in all of it when you're when you're doing stowage whether you do the tie downs or not that's that's up to you i mean you, you can argue whether you need to do that all the time but i'm just thinking here whether we could hang one off of the hooks you've got to think about the practicalities of of how it would be done and obviously it's best not to just glue a jerry can to the side of a turret it needs to be near somewhere where it can be tied down that makes it all look a lot more realistic and sells the idea and back to that thing of creating a sort of story and, and visual interest and something for the for when you look at it you instantly make up the story and you think ah right well those jerry cans are on there because they're tied down stuff around the back etc etc you can see just a quick glimpse there some of the recessed uh, detail on the, that those green jerry cans which has got the uh, 1942 date on it so we just face those in to make sure they're not showing out and there we go that's uh, that's the handles on now as i said i'm going to do water cans so using my trusty infini board here which has actually been re rebranded i think ak bought these uh as well so you can also buy the ak version of it um these are brilliant. So this is uh, the Easy Cutting Mat A, I believe, which is just straight lines running from 1 mil down to 0.3 mil, is it? I don't think it goes quite down to 0.1. And I've decided to use the 1 mil width. And all it is is a board with loads of recessed grooves, which you can run your blade down, and it's just a guide for the blade to strut parallel lines. Cut parallel lines. And then you've got your nice piece of uh, straight tape. And I'm just going to stick these on now because we painted it white. What we're doing is masking off the white. So just uh, wrapping that straight around to give the vertical line and just trying to make sure it all meets up when we get back on the other side. And then that hopefully is in the same same uh, line and everything is, is looking normal. Drilled holes in these where I know they're going to be lying on their uh, backs, as it were, facing up. Uh, and that's where I've put the cocktail stick for painting. And as we wrap that round, that makes the white cross. So all we've got to do now is spray them uh, in the same desert colour that we sprayed the uh, the tank with. And there we go. So that's when they've all been sprayed the, uh, the base colour and unmasked. And that's what you get. Very typical stuff uh, seen with the Africa core in, uh, in the desert. I'm just gluing these together now. I've measured how many fit across the width of the turret 
so I know how many I've got to do. And I'm trying to get those lines out of sync. I don't want it all to look like one big line because they would have been painted separately. And this is a perfect um, uh, candidate for some chipping here as well because these would have, uh, the white is off often uh, just painted on very lightly. So it shows through. It's not quite as bold as what I've done here. So you can obviously chip that back. And the jerry cans did get banged about quite a lot. We're going to be depicting relatively new ones here. And there we are with the whole line glued together. Just making sure on the uh, the bits that you're not going to see, getting some more glue down there to give a good join. And now for the test fit. And I'm going to have them facing that way with the uh, openings towards the front. So just checking that it all looks well. They fit nicely. It's almost like it was designed for it. So some of the... Uh, pictures that I've seen have modified racks uh, built in there so there's numerous ways to do it but they've also that's on a Panzer 3 and on the Panzer 4 you can also see that they've just been um, tied down so we're going to actually do the tying down of them so again gluing the rack in the back there and also for interest I've painted one of the jerry cans green and the fuel uh, can is also painted that's filled grey so that's XF65 uh, which is kind of like the auxiliary stuff got painted in that colour. So the thread here, I've got some stuff out of uh, my partner's sewing box here and I've seen one of them looks quite nice and looks just right. So this is quite thick uh, thread, but it's just right. It, um, it, it would be the size of the kind of rope I guess you'd use for tying down. So I uh, figured if we thread them all through underneath the handles, which is easier said than done, and then wrap that around, that would tie them in horizontally. And then we'd also do the same around the front and tie that all back down again as well. And that would tie the unit together of jerry cans. And then we would tie the string off to the side of the turret. That was, <laughs> that was my sort of thinking there. And you can see just tying off around the bottom now. So, Dab of super glue here just to fix the string tight does the job and then you can actually just cut it away so you can see with it tied off just with a little bit of uh, super glue and that's the one block tied together uh, through one way and then I go across the other way as well with the string across the tops of them and it all looks quite natural and there we are you can see we've got some the, the section that's joined as a unit of jerry cans and now you can see a dab of super glue. There's the tie-off point that we're going to use. So we just uh, glue one bit there in and around and tie it off. And then once that's set, we can use that to uh, that fixed point to give us a bit of tension and tie off the other side. Let that glue set and then just trim that back. A little bit more super glue just to make sure everything's where it needs to be. And then cut the trailing edges off and that pretty much looks the part as you can see the other side the bit i've done and i was going to cut these frayed ends off but as they're so tight and my scissors are huge i've decided just to with a bit of super glue just bend it all back in and glue it down and get rid of it and there we go quite effective looks the part and then just to um cover up one side i found in the spares box I had one of those africa core uh, helmets one of the strange ones. Not sure if they were using them at this this period, but I thought I'd just chuck it on the side anyway for a bit of, again, just adding a bit of visual interest and a little bit of character. So that's all the stowage complete. Got to have the trusty bucket on the uh, hanging off the end as well. That's something you'll find on all German vehicles. Uh, for some reason, the bucket was never far away. And it changes the vehicle. So this has gone for something that's been on the shelf of Doom for about four years uh, to an interesting vehicle that can kind of join the collection at the back, that is. It's not perfect, but um, it's okay. I did add a bit of track sag as well, but we'll look at that in a different video. That was a bit complicated. I used the um, pinning method where you, you drill a hole in the side of the lower hole and then slide a pin in. Uh, to force the track down, super glue it, and then glue the pin onto the track. But it was not massively successful, so I, you know, I want to perfect that before we show you uh, any more on that. 
So now it's into the weathering, which is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to leave you with this. Um, I'm just using some of the MIG washes, some of the MIG panel liners uh, that you can easily pick up. They're about four or five pounds a bottle. Something else that we haven't used so far in the series, but I have used them quite a lot on the channel with uh, aircraft builds. They're quite useful for giving sort of dust in that. And there they are. So you can, it's quite self-explanatory. And I'm also using oil washes all over this as well.
Now, something that we haven't done before, and I kind of stumbled on it, is to use a bit of um, graphite from a pencil. Now, I did grind some of this up, but I found it actually quite a lot more effective if you just draw a bit on, then rub it in with your finger, as with a wet finger as well. A little bit of um, moisture helps it flow a bit. That's just water. So just went over the vehicle, just trying to kind of give a bit of wear around some of the areas that that would be of heavy use. So obviously the doors, hinges, any scuff marks and all that sort of thing. And it just gave a little bit of a different look to it. And again, it's another technique you can do uh, for just to give the model a lift in a basic way quickly. Um, it's not something you're going to do going on in more advanced techniques because it does show a little bit of um, it's quite heavy and you can see some of the texture from the graphite but it's it's simple enough for again for a model like this we well, can have all kinds of finishes in in your collection um, I don't mind trying new techniques myself and I would encourage you to as well so that brings this build to an end and next week we'll be doing a similar thing but with the Tamiya 38T but we'll be taking that much more um, seriously in the sense of we we'll try and get quite a nice good looking model out at the end of it and it goes on to a, a little um, base as well we use quite a lot of pigments in that one so as always thanks for staying tuned and uh, thanks for watching if you haven't already save this playlist because it's getting updated weekly and uh, as i say it's the tamiya 38t next week if you'd like to support the channel uh, there's a couple of links down below where you can do that let me know your comments down below subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video